Fiona, and welcome to the transcript. This week, Hamptop participates in the dodgeball tournament, Katie and Kiara attend the Vins Dog Show, Cheap Thrills visits the Pie Bar in Florence, and transcript producers Aaron and Adele sit down with Nacho Average Interview. Tune in to the end of the episode for some important reminders. Hi, this is Levi Richards, and welcome to Hamptop. Y'all ready for this? Emotions ran high in the gym last Thursday night as the Class of 2020 organized a dodgeball tournament as a fundraiser. Blood, sweat, and tears were poured into the game, yet F, star, 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 Amherst, came out with the win with seemingly no effort defeating the Ice Bunnies in the final. We sat down with tournament organizers Adia Bennett and Sam Ginsberg to ask them about the success of last Thursday night. We decided to do the dodgeball fundraiser because it's pretty hard to get, like, class participation and like school-wide participation, but we've noticed like that the sports events um, are really popular and they make us a lot yeah. We were definitely hoping that uh, one of the like girl teams would get a little further just because we had a few like really strong girl teams who we hoped would win, but <laughs> sadly they didn't. The prize for the winners, we gave them a bag of candy and also we made them each medals um, with a little first place dodgeball. Um, sticker on it, and then they also got um, ten dollars each, so fifty dollars as a team. Uh, Sophie Bennett in the last like round got hit in like the face or the head or something like, three times. I don't really know about the rules of like ducking into a ball, so I think that that's where like a lot of the passion came from. But I did see her face, and it was <laughs> it looked like it had been smacked like hard. I had a great throw; it hit Wilshaw's foot. But then someone caught it. I don't know who. You're there telling me you hit Will Shot's foot. But you know, my team, we put in a lot of effort. Our team dynamic was really positive and good. One team that I don't want to win is Hammer. Star, star, star. F, star, 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 Amherst. This is the uh, underrated team here. Third round. We have freshman phenom Ben Suggestion. You want to do a rematch later? I'd actually, yeah, I'd be down. Um, we can do 11 at my house. Right. Um, so I've just got, I've got like a, a backyard. Um, we've got some grass, and it's so don't, don't wear cleats because you'll rip it up. So um, just wear something smooth on the bottom. Um, please don't drive because we don't want to wake up the neighbors. So if you could ride bikes or something, that'd be so sick. Like, you, you think that you legally got Tom Jakes out? I have. Um, I did get hit. My name is Candy Tauscher, and I am the coordinator of VINS. We have basically two fundraisers for VINS. The first one is a letter drive in September, um, asking for donations, and then we do the dog show, which is very profitable. And basically, we're a nonprofit, so we don't seek to have, you know, additional funds, but we need enough funds to run. And we put volunteers in the classrooms. We think our big impact in the Northampton schools is the volunteers. We have many thousands of hours a year of volunteer time, and we have 30 plus volunteers in the schools. We have six schools impacted by volunteers helping. The community reaches out to us every year after the dog show. They love having the mayor um, start the parade. That makes them feel that the mayor is really invested in the school community. There's not a lot to do sometimes in the middle of winter and it's one thing you can do that there's really no charge and it's, you see people that you know, you see fun things and if you choose to get a hot dog or you choose to put money in a raffle that's fine but it's certainly not necessary. So it's just a nice event for the community to get together and have some fun. The dog show this year raised over $6,000, so we're very thankful and very grateful to the community for all their help to make the dog show as successful as it is. We also interviewed some of the dogs. Her hair is very fluffy. Do you ever step on it sometimes? Do you like to take long walks, Stella? Do you like to sit on people's laps? 
How are you enjoying the show so far? How do you guys get along? Are there any fights at home? Do you like walking around or would you rather be picked up? How does it feel being one of the fluffiest dogs here? Yeah. How do you feel being so tiny? Is it scary with such big people around you sometimes? Not scared at all. Once a general store, then a barber shop, the pie bar went under renovations in 2014, opening fully in 2015. Serving up meat, cream, and seasonal fruit pies, the pie bar has quickly become a staple of downtown Florence. In the spirit of Saturday's Pie Day, we're here to check out our own local selection. Uh, my name is Maura Glennon. Um, I'm the owner of Florence Pie Bar, and we are about five, a little more than five years old. Yep. And um, previous to opening the shop, I was a music professor for about 20 years up at Keene State College, and I wanted to be a little closer to home with my kids who are in the school system here, and it's been great. I've gotten to know my community, and um, I've really been enjoying our time. The mission of the Pie Bar is to create a space that is sort of going back in time. There's no Wi-Fi here. So people talk to each other. They have a conversation over a piece of pie or a, a friendly meeting. And if you look around, everybody's talking. They're not looking at their phones and they're not looking at their laptops. And that is, a, I think, a novel thing these days and it's kind of nice to see. People come in and they talk to each other. And that community has been really, really lovely to see. It's something you can't force. It just happens. So it's been a gift for us. A lot of local people help me do all of the work here. So um, from the plumbing to the wiring to electricity to the tables and the equipment, it's been really a lovely collaborative effort um, with all the craftsmen. And then since then, we work really closely with a lot of local farms. So that explains a little bit of our price point. So we work hard to, to support the local agriculture. And for that reason, our apple pie costs a little bit more than you might you know, get at Big Y. Because we're making it, and we're peeling it, and we're baking it, and we're making the crust here, uh, really trying to support local agriculture. Awesome. For Pie Day, we um, have, usually have a couple contests going on. So we have guessing games, and we have um, we have specials, so to this year we're going to have a thing where we have hidden stars on cups or to-go things or plates, so if you get a hidden star, your item is free. So whatever you ordered on that plate or in that coffee or whatever it is, yeah, that's your prize for the day. And so we're going to also have little salted chocolate bites, which are these little treats. Um, that, that's kind of one of our signature items, so people really like them. So we'll be giving those away as well. Uh, we'll have some guessing games, and the winners of those guessing games will get uh, certificates for whole pies. So among just pies, they also have like little, tiny little micro pies. They have other baked goods. They have cookies. They have ice cream. They have whipped cream you can add on. Um, but their special on the board is 575 cup of coffee, slice of pie, and I think that's probably one of their bigger things. Their pies also rotate. It is a little bit more of like a gourmet type feeling place, but it's very much of a coffee shop type feel with um, a lot of bakery and bakery type stuff. And I hope you come down, check it out. That's pretty worth it for a maybe not so cheap, but moderately priced thrill. I approve. Hi, I'm Lucas Lang, joining you for our beautiful outdoor set for this week's edition of The Nacho Show. This week I'm joined by... Aaron Wagenheim. <laughs> Adele Jordan. All right, so our hot topic this week is gonna be like what it's like to be uh, working on the transcript. So what do you guys do exactly on the transcript? It's a lot to handle. I mean, it's a lot of uh, responsibility, but I get the pleasure of covering my own stories so I can portray myself as however I want and portray my uh, competition. Is that a lot? Uh -huh. Let's uh -huh. see. Like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, crazy. Sorry for the rather elongated intermission. Um, what intermission? I don't know what you're talking about. No, that was Nothing happened. happened. How do you deal with uh, damning critiques from students and teachers? Well, um, definitely it's hard when you make something that you're really proud of. Cue slow piano music. And someone doesn't like it. But 
my advice to all the youngins out there is <laughs> you just gotta push through. <laughs> that was so moving. <laughs> so that was beautiful. You can do it. You can do this. It's all up here, man. It's all up here. If the you last believe frontier. It, if you believe in it, you can do it. And if someone tells you you can't, Tell them. See ya! <laughs> We're gonna do some teacher and student critiques um, from past episodes. Uh, you know, really going ham on the transcripts. Okay, this one is uh... <laughs> Why is the nacho show a thing? <laughs> Very informative. In Wait, this is, this is funny. Whenever I give my mom something to read on my phone, she's always like, <laughs> on uh, the hands up segment of the rivalry with Amherst, Adele, you didn't even cover the ultimate in baseball rivalry. So I wasn't a member then? Lucas, stop bouncing in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all bounce. <laughs> Thanks for watching this week's edition of the Nacho. That was all for this week's episode. Stay safe and have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.